Hello, my name is Peter Lasher. Um, you may know me from the peering boff as uh, a peering slut, but in my spare time, um, I handle uh, a lot of the DNS operations over um, at ISC. Um, this is one of those timely talks where uh, we're going to talk about something that was very current as of last week, actually. A little bit of background. Um, on January the 18th, uh, IS Prime became the victim of a DNS spoofing attack using spoof source addresses. Uh, some of you or some of us are calling it an amplification attack because the query is dot n dot NS record is quite small, uh, about 47 octets, and while the up upward referral response uh, is a bit larger, which is about 256 octets, about five times the size. So basically, you're asking this little small query, and you're getting a slightly bigger response going back to the spoofed address. Um, now, one interesting aspect of this attack is that the queries are, are, apparent, are being sent to the authoritative name servers only. Usually, you see something like this being, a, being hit by um, open recursive servers. Uh, now, one reason that this might be happening is that um, you can easily find a list of authoritative name servers. You just look up any number of any number of domain names, look up the NS records, and there's your target. Versus having to scan the whole net for open recursive name servers. So this is how it would look like. You basically dig uh, your favorite uh, authoritative name server for the name servers for root, and it happily gives you the list of root servers. So this, this brings back an old debate. Now, what are authoritative name ser servers supposed to do for queries that it possibly can't answer? Because it can only answer for what it's either a master for or a slave. Now, these upward referrals, as we call them, are bad because they're basically useless. The resolver should have this information already. And, and it already knows where to start and where, and, and where to get this information from. And frankly, a, a, a proper resolver should consider, it, consider an answer like this to be out of scope to come back. So basically, it gets the answer. It doesn't know what to do with it anyway. It's out of scope. So, and the authoritative name server um, should have a root hints file. And that if you're asking for just Joe Random authoritative name server, you don't know if the root hint or the hints file that, that that server has is even up to date. As we all know, we keep our root hints file up to date. Um, now, and then upper referrals can lead to referral loops. So it's asking again and again and again further on. Um, that, that results in basically useless queries. Now, the first thing that at least I saw on the DNS operations list and the Nanog mailing list was filter them. Just filter them out. That we won't give a response back, and and all will be good. Well, that kind of doesn't work because they can always just change change the question. So, and you don't want to break and just filter out port 53. Because, like in the case of IS Prime, they're an ISP. They run actual authoritative. They actually uh, run legitimate services on their DNS servers. Um, so, what you need is actually something that is actually within DNS scope or the DNS server scope to actually stop answering these things. Because what we really want is to basically refuse these um, refuse these queries, and then. Because, of it, because if it's refused, then the offending query or the offending machine should actually just stop. So possible solutions for this um, in bind, if basically what you want to do is include um, additional from cache equals no to, the, to your global options. Now, if you, you can also do this by just doing it in the global options and then allowing access on a per zone basis. Um, now, and note that you can't just remove the root hints file because in bind, um, because we like to be able to bootstrap, um, it's actually hard coded into name D. So if you don't have a root hints file, it goes back to the code, what it's hard coded in, and just uses that instead. 
So, and also I should note that if you're still running bind eight, please stop for the good of the internet. So this is what you should see. So you dig the server and it gets back a refused and it basically ends up being the same size as the original query. So there's no amplification. You get one for one. Now for other DNS providers, for the sake of clarity or for the sake of fairness, um, I believe DJB DNS actually does refuse um, out of scope queries um, from the beginning. So you don't have to do anything. Um, for PowerDNS, you can set this in your config file, and set send root referral in your configuration file. Um, if for your other, if you're using something else like NSD or Nominum or anything like that, you can contact your vendor. Um, I actually tried looking for NSD and couldn't find it. So I should give a thanks to um, Dwayne Wessels over at DNSOARC. Um, he's been correlating a lot of this stuff or a lot of this that's been going around and has a um, has a uh, URL that's up there uh, where you can find more information about this and code snippets and, and things like that. And then to members of the DNS operations and Nanog mailing lists um, for, uh, for contributing to the discussion. That's basically it. We can take a few questions. Uh, Martin Levy from Hurricane. So being protocol correct is great, and you know we're all here because we, we adhere to protocols. But if I'm running a bunch of name servers that are explicitly um, authoritative and have mm -hmm. never been used as a recursive name server, and someone goes and queries me for example.com and I don't own that domain, why should I even bother responding? Why should I even send a packet back? Um, there are some. Well, it depends on the, the way the client's set up. You may find in some situations that the client will still ask. It wants an answer. Um, and if it gets no answer, then you're still going to see the packets coming in. The inverse is being, being magnified or, or you know, being sent back to an incorrect source. Yeah, well, and it, what we're saying is that if you use refuse, then if it's actually legit or if it's doing the right thing, then it should just stop. It'll just say, oh, I've got refused. I'm not trying again. Okay, so that's a wonderful protocol response. So let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about email here. Um, you know, we live in a world where the percentage of email that's coming in that is not wanted is far, far greater than the amount of email that is wanted. If DNS goes the same way, inevitably at some point, maybe your answer gets modified. Again, it's the protocol spec versus the real world. True. And if someone wants to propose it, then we're happy to listen. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Hey, Peter, you got Pete, you one more time. One more. One more. Uh, Tom from Dynamic. Um, when bind, this is a bind specific question, when you configure bind for recurse no, Mm -hmm. and you remove the root hints file, if you were to remove the hints file, mm -hmm. uh, and your recursion knowing you're running authoritative only, mm -hmm. why do you need to fall back to hard-coded values in the source to prime root hints? You don't need root hints anymore in the first place. Um, that is the de uh, design question. Um, that's currently... What? <laughs> yes. Um, that's something that's actually being discussed. Okay. So, thanks. Yeah. Sandy, do you have a question for this one or are you just ready? Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you, Peter. Great talk.